So today's notes, we're going to talk about another measurement um, for measuring angles and arcs within a circle. So I'm reading at the top of the page, just as we can measure a line segment by using different units of length, as shown to the right, we can also measure angles by a different unit of measure than just degrees. So the definition of a radian is within the box. It says a radian is the measure of an angle that when drawn as a central angle of a circle, so you have to have a central angle of a circle, it intercepts an arc whose length equals the length of the radius. So the measure of arc AB would be equal to R, whatever the radius is. So say the radius was two centimeters. The arc would have to be two centimeters as well. So let's take this space here to look at the relationship between degrees and radians. And I want you to draw a circle using your compass. So I need to mark, I want you to draw it in the center here. So I need to mark my center. I'm going to move this in. And I want you to draw it so that it fits in this space. So here's my circle. I don't want you to change the width of your compass, okay? And I want you to draw a diameter so we can divide the circle into 180 degrees. Here's my line tool. Oh, it's on the right side. Move that up. Again, the diameter needs to go through the center of the circle. So now I have, and starting here, this is point right here is zero degrees or 360 degrees. <coughs> Where an angle that goes starting here and ends up over this side, the semicircle, is 180 degrees. Now, I want you to make really fine points as the one here, because we're going to start, we're going to make arcs of that are the same length as the radius. We're going to make some radians here. And by definition, a radian of a circle is a central angle in which the length of the radius is equal to the length of the arc. So we're going to make, we should have three arcs, and you actually should have just under three here. So let's make our first mark. So here. Number two. Keep going and make three. And I should... And I do fall just before that dot or point for 180 degrees. That 180 degrees is equivalent to 3.14 radians. So if I go all the way around and 180 degrees is 3.14 radians, 360 degrees is going to be about, I should use approximation, 6.28 radians. So I'm going to go change that to approximate. So the do three more, and you should also end up just before that point where 360 is. And I do. So I get rid of my compass now. So this here is 6.28 all the way around the circle. Now, 3.14, you should recognize that an approximation of 3.14 is the same as the number pi. So pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. And if I double that 3.14 um, to get 6.28, this is 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. So let's box those. Okay, so let's then take your ruler or straight edge as well. And I want you to actually draw the segments in there so we can see one radian, an angle that's one radian. So I don't want that line segment, but the angle of one. So draw it to all of your arcs. And 
Okay. So let's, before we look below again, just highlight. This angle right here, starting at your diameter, so here, this is one radian. If I extend and look at using the diameter again, this angle would be two radians, okay? This one, let's not use red, let's use green. And this angle here, from here to here, can't tell if you're, I mean, it may be hard for you to tell, but you can't tell if I'm stopping right here. So right here is exactly three radians. But going all the way to 180 right here, that's 3.14. We can keep going around to 4, 5, 6, and 6.28. But let's look at these side by side. I want you to write down the circles broken up into eight congruent uh, sectors. Let's break it, or four congruent sectors. I'd like you to break it up into eight. So let's take your straight edge and divide it into eight congruent sectors. Okay, so one, oh, I can actually fix that. It's hard because I have to kind of guess to draw my slanted line. So it's not going to be perfect. So in pi, again, I'm looking for the degrees, or I'm sorry, for a degree measurement, my measurement or my number is going to be in terms of degrees, or radians is going to be in terms of pi, okay? So in breaking this up into eighths, okay, excuse me, 360 divided by eight, or I can look at it as one-fourth of 180, we have 45 degrees, also half of 90. So each line is going to be 45 degrees. So 45 plus 45 is 90. 90 plus 45 is 135 degrees. 135 plus 45 is 180. 180 plus 45 is 225. Plus 45 is 270. Plus 45 is 315. So that's measuring a circle in terms of a degree. So 135 degree angle is here. In terms of radians, what would that angle be? So we're going to go right around the circle again. In radians, this is either 0 or 2 pi, where this is pi. This is going to be 1 fourth pi, or pi over 4. This is going to be half, or pi over 2. So we're adding a quarter each time. So one-fourth plus one-fourth is two-fourths, which is pi over two. Uh, two-fourths plus one-fourth is three-fourths. Four-fourths, which is one pi. Five-fourths. Six-fourths, which reduces to three pi over two. And then seven pi over four. And then, of course, eight-fourths, which would reduce to just two pi. So we're going to take a look at the same picture and look at it in terms of degrees and in terms of a radian measure. So let's assume this is a diameter, okay, so I have 180 degrees and I've broken it up into thirds. So this angle right here, let's call it theta, theta would be a third of 180, which is 60 degrees. In terms of a radian measure, that would be one third of pi or pi over 3 radians. I like to look at it, not in terms of pi, but as an approximation to kind of go back to that circle to see how much I have. I, mean, I, I can only at most have 6.28 radians in one circle. And this is approximately, to the nearest tenth, 1.0. So if you do match it up with your picture on the front, that looks to be about a 1 radian. So this angle here, Okay, you can look at it as 
Okay, uh, a fraction of 180, so we have 180 plus another whole. You could also look at it as a fraction of the total circle of 360. So if this is theta, we can do 5 eighths times 360, which is 225 degrees. In terms of radians, okay, 5 eighths of 2 pi, do some cross canceling, and that's going to be 5 pi over 4 radians which is an approximation of 3.9. So if you do line it up with your circle, that looks to be um, just under 4 radians. So we're going to start to do some converting, and these conversion factors are on the Common Core reference sheet, so you don't have to memorize these conversions, but let me show you where they come from. And it's using the relationship that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So if I want to find one radian, I would divide by pi, because pi over pi would cancel, and one radian equals 180 over pi. Um, one degree, I would divide by 180, and 180, or pi, radians over 180 is equal to 1 degree. So if I wanted to, let's look directly below that, if I want to go, I'm given a degree measure and I want it to end up in radians, that means I want pi in my answer, okay? So if 1 degree is pi over, or pi radians over 180, I would multiply the number of degrees times this, because they're equivalent, um, to get the appropriate radian measure. Also, too, if we want to go from degrees to radians, we want degrees to cancel. And when you're multiplying fractions, whatever you want to cancel needs to go in the denominator of your fraction, so that you're left with the numerator of pi. So we multiply by pi over 180. When we want to go from radians to degrees, I want the radians in the bottom so that the radians cancel. So we multiply by the 180 over pi, as the one radian contains 180 over pi. So let's look at example number two. We have a sector, it doesn't need to be drawn to scale, a sector of a circle, okay, radius of 8 centimeters, the angle in radians is 31 pi over 18. Find the measure of the arc in terms of degrees. Well, in terms of a radian measure, this arc is also 31 pi over 18, as a central angle is congruent to the arc that it intercepts. So to change this now to degrees, I want to get rid of the radians or the pi. So I multiply by 180 over pi. Pi's cancel, and we're left with 31 times 180 over 18, which is 310 degrees. Since the pi's cancel out every time, and we know that um, this here, pi is equivalent to 180, instead of multiplying by 180 over pi, you can make the direct substitution. So I can just do 31 times 180 over 18 because pi is equivalent to 118 or 180 degrees. Number three, find the measure of the arc or the angle indicating radians. Well, let's first find it in degrees. So um, inscribed angle vertex on the circle, it's half, so this is 40 degrees. Another inscribed angle, so we're going to go backwards, you're going to double that to find the arc, so this is 190 degrees. So to change 40 degrees to a radian measure, we want the degrees on the bottom so that we can cancel out, and pi in the numerator. So 40 pi over 180. So what does that reduce to? It reduces to 2 pi over 9 radians. 190 times pi over 180, so to reduce that, they're both divisible by 10, so we end up with 19 pi over 18 radians. Number four, 
Express in radians the angle whose measure is given. As I mentioned, okay, and going from a degree to a radian, we want the degree to cancel out, so we multiply by pi over 180. That was just the questions like we were doing on the last page, going from degrees to radians. But this time, in addition to an exact, exact is in terms of pi, and wants us to round to the nearest tenth of a radian measure as well. So let's first find it an exact. 15 goes into itself once, goes into 180 12 times, so we end up with pi over 12 radians, which is approximately 0.3. If you looked at a circle, okay, in a 15 degree angle, it's very small. And that is just a fraction of a radian, because remember one of radian was about here, and that's not even drawn to the scale. So it just makes sense that 15 degrees is pi over 12, or 0.3 radians. Oh, let's cross cancel here. Uh, 20 goes in there 10 times, 20 goes in there 9 times, so we end up with 10 pi over 9, which is approximately 3.5 radians. So again, drawing a circle, 180 was here, 270 is here, so that's about there. Here's 200 degrees, or about three and a half radians. And then last, express in degrees, well, you could do it one of two ways. Since pi is equivalent to 180, you can do a direct substitution, or you can multiply by 180 over pi. Either way, and pi's cancel, you're doing the same thing. So we end up with 360 over 3, which is 120 degrees. When you're given an, an approximate radian measure, where this is an exact radian measure, this is not in terms of pi, so it's approximate. I would rewrite that in terms of a fraction, so 1 and a half is 3 over 2, and then multiply by 180 over pi. Because you don't have a pi in your original fraction, because it's not exact, there's going to be no cancellation of pi. We can cross cancel here, and we end up with 270 over pi, which is approximately 85.9 degrees.